Hey, Coach Craig Romero here, and I was having fun watching this year's Grand Nationals in Oklahoma, and I wanted to point out some of my observations that really got me excited, as well as some things that we all as BMXers can learn from. You know, the Grands, as it stands, is the world's biggest BMX race gathering as far as participants go. And so if you're a racer here in North America, this is your Super Bowl. Lots of great things happening to racers when they race well at Grands. It's a big proving ground. Almost all the eyes that matter are paying attention. Real quick, if you don't know who I am, again, I'm Coach Greg Romero, three-time Olympic coach, and I've raced at Grand Nationals more as a pro than as an amateur and understand this race quite well. I've won the Grands as an amateur, elite pro, and also as a veteran pro. Ever since the Grand Nationals has moved venues from Oklahoma City all the way to Tulsa, Oklahoma back in 1998, it was a big relief because the Expo Arena, as it's known as today, is such a massive floor space and that means you can open up the straights and allow for some top end leg speed to come into play and more times than not they've always made the first straight long enough to make it to where a rider can truly compete from lane eight meaning lane choice doesn't really matter may the fastest rider down the first straight get the whole shot they have always made the first straight take advantage of the long direction of the arena this year for some reason they made the first straight on the short width of the arena and from watching and also talking to many that competed there it was really hard to get into a whole shot position from lanes five through eight. It almost reminded me of some of the short track racing that they have in Vegas that we've seen. From there, coming out of the first turn, you had two short first straights with two turns coming up really, really quickly. And it actually favored riders that were leading right out of the first turn because they could just run away from the guys from behind. And that's because the first straights are simply not long enough to allow for riders to generate speed using their jumping navigating skills to set riders up in front of them. By the time you got down to the second to last straight the outside dog legged so the leader can just protect the inside all the way and it seemed like it was almost discouraging to set up passes in the last turn the way that grands are always known for their controversial inviting last turns where riders get blasted of course if you won you have no complaints you love the track but for everyone else including myself who watches for entertainment there was less action the laps were fast the track was great for running a 900 moto event let's talk racing first off in the pro class i thought Cam Wood was commando. He looked fantastic. He looked like he was the fastest to me winning two out of three mains. Super consistent, great gait, great acceleration, and has the race smarts. If he brings this into the next year, we could be looking at a new American number one pro since Connor Fields. On an international level, he looks poised to be an Olympic medal threat in the next few years as well. When it came to the national number one amateur race in the boys class, Drew Polk won the AM title by simply just having to finish third or better. I mean, that luxury is great and certainly when you win races in the biggest most competitive class throughout the year you're going into the grands with a big point lead hats off to drew for converting and doing what he had to do listen it's not easy not with that short first straight he had an outside lane and if you look at the battle and fight he had in the first turn this could have gone south really quickly now the question is is drew polk pro material i think above the shoulders he has it perhaps he could focus more on the physical development and be patient on turning pro but certainly Historically, we've seen lots of older number one AMs who have turned into fantastic pros. Guys like David Milham, Mike King, Robert McPherson, Corbin Sherrod, Nick Long, David Herman, the list goes on. One race I thought that should have been re-ran was the nine expert class. The gate seemed to malfunction. There was one rider who actually looked like they knew when the gate was going to drop. Three of them hit the gate and the other guys just stood there standing, not knowing what to do. And, you know, at the end of the day, they should have re-ran that. Someone should have caught that. Does anyone know? knows what was going on with that gate at Grands, leave a comment below. Moving on, an impressive ride in the girls' side was Ava Corley, who was up for the title. She looked focused on the task and made a rare second turn move to claim the title. Very impressive for such a young racer. I think she has what it takes to compete in pro. If she develops more physically like the likes of an Elise Post, look out. I think we may have the second coming. Other notables, Barry Noble, man, he looked locked in and sheesh, man, he looked fast enough to make the elite main. He had really, really fast fast banging first straights and he wasn't going to be denied and also shout out to my boy Coy Widener who just started racing a few years ago and won from the outside lane he went in sitting nag three in points and his father reached out to me to help him with his grands prep and I was like dude go for the win you know they, they just wanted to get top three and be happy with that but you know I was just trying to say because small goals take the same effort as big ones make the goal huge and with the training within two weeks he improved his first straight times at the local track by two and a half seconds and went into the grands full of confidence 
And with that prep and confidence, he whole shotted first place, bam, it was over. All right, what was your favorite moment at the Grants? Did you go? Let us know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.